All right, this is going to be the strangest video I've ever made. Um, right in the middle of an assessment for your, your amp here, uh, Bentley. And I've got to say, I've, first of all, I've never heard of the festival before. But my God, what a cool amp this is. This is probably one of my new favorite PB amps. I'm not, I mean, this thing needs some work, don't get me wrong, but man, the bones are good. So let me let me plug into the bright channel really quick, and I'm going through a, a 412. This sounds so good with a Strat. Your your tubes are absolutely roasted, by the way. You already know that, and you could hear some um, some crackling. <laughs> I love this thing. this thing man so um the real treat is the normal channel which is um which is malfunctioning in a very delicious way and here's what i'm talking about get some of that reverb down there's an abundance of reverb but check this out this amp uh, let me let me get a shot round back for uh, the rest of you mutants out there who don't know the goodness of the festival we we're doing this together we're doing this together someone once said better together and in this case it's certainly true i don't know about the the, the prior case but okay stand by so um, just peeking around back, it looks like the festival was uh, PV's or Hartley's answer to uh, the Music Man amps. So um, we have a quad of roasted Fender 6L6 GCs. Um, did, who, who stamped it first? Was it Groove Tubes or Fender? Um, in any case, these guys are uh, roasted. Uh, you should see the backside of, of these labels here. I don't know if you can check out that caramel the caramel overtones there in the back of these labels if you look at this guy right here and uh, this one as well and the other ones are like that and you can see the silk screening even and poor shape these are actually um triple labeled um the original uh, the manufacturer was Softex. uh these are wxts which are really good sounding tubes and they're incredibly rugged if you get the plus version especially um Anyway, um, figure this thing's about between 80 and 100 watts. We have an old Mallory cap can here. Um, how many sections? One, two, three, four. Four section Mallory. Um, 
240 microfarad and 220 microfarad sections uh, rated at 500 volts DC. And then you can see uh, an Accutronics, an old Accutronics, I think Illinois tank down there. And uh, no doubt uh, driven um, by a PV's little um, op amp circuit, which I think does a fabulous job. Uh, call me crazy. But um, the amp needs a, a basic service. I don't know if it's going to resolve the crackling. Um, but other than that, man, I would roll with this thing, old Meridian Monster. This this is PV. This is PV before. Um, this was probably the best the best Tolex that PV ever had. If you can get a sense of it, there it's um. It's not that super deep nap that they started applying to like um, maybe pre uh, teal stripe solid state amps. You know the really grainy and bumpy ones. Um, I this is more uh, th this is a thinner material and and the pattern is a lot more pleasing, at least in my mind. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, if if this was my amp, um, I would give it a a, a good. I would, I would put in a new quad tubes. Um, I would obviously check uh, the capacitors there, uh, resistors, uh, do the whole thing, give it a scrub-a-dub on a Tolex, do the pots, jacks, switches, and, uh, and just see where it takes us. The, the normal channel's got um, a hell of a lot of drive. So um, I don't know if that's, a, <laughs> that's an issue with um, on the transistors or not, um, but I'll... I'll crack it open in the next uh, part of this video, and then we'll take a peek. Oh, and and by the way, um, this is the the entire power cord is is like this. It's um it, it's actually a little nerve wracking to handle it, um, and it, this would be another thing that it would also change. So uh, so so Bentley, um, you should just ask. And by the way, Bentley's from the home country, the hometown. Um, that makes him extra cool. Um, if, if this were my amp, um, I, I would also do the power cord, but you, you have quite a few awesome amps, man. Um, I don't know if you still have that classic 50, 410. Um, it doesn't do, is there overlap? Maybe a little bit. Um, I don't know what else you're running right now. Um, but for sure this guy, this dude is right in the Fender camp, where the the classic 50 you have is more in a Vox camp, I think, to my taste. More British and English or English sounding. And uh, this guy here is definitely more in the American camp. So if, if this has any overlap with, with the other stuff you've, you've got over at the house, I, I don't know. But is it cool? Yeah, dude, super unique. Um, let's get this sucker open. And see what uh, what little surprises we can find in there. And um, now you're going to send me down a rabbit hole uh, doing some homework on this thing. I'm excited about this. Um, I would have to order these tubes if you want to go in that direction. Um, it's lightweight. Which is a nice surprise and a nice change for PV. Um, I, I've been getting nothing but super um, heavy amps from, from those guys. Um, so this is a nice change of pace. So, okay. Oh. The thing that made that little house right there is still inside of this amp. But lucky for me, he decided to go enjoy the warm embrace of this filter cap can here. And there he is. Fried him right up. Good Lord, I'm glad he's gone. All right, sorry for the shaky camera. I'm really zoomed in here. Um, these filters here, and in fact, everything on this board needs some attention. Um, I can't quite see what these are. This might be a hundred microfarads, but these need to go. This is uh, actually um, just swelled up and then split its case, and then um, looks like. It leaked onto this resistor or the resistor overheated, but I doubt it. I doubt that the resistor did that. It just looks like that um, electrolyte material just corroded the board there. 
So I'd have to see about that. I would change these little electrolytics along the board as well and then these little dudes back there and see where that gets us. Um, otherwise, uh, aside from the creepy stuff in there, I think uh, probably good to go. Hey guys, well, this is not gonna be one of those days where you're getting great camera shots. Um, the normal channel is very distorted in a way that I, I personally like, but it's not supposed to be. Um, aside from the fact that I found some living things in here that didn't want to leave. Um, oh, wow. Broken solder joints on the, on the reverb. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Broken solder joints on the reverb. Um, some of... Some of the legs of these transistors were touching. It's like somebody went in here and just twisted them up. So I'm gonna scoot this over. They look like a bunch of drunk viruses or robots, don't they? So let me separate these guys. It's like a Congo line over here. Guy, what are you doing there, buddy? Let's get you turned around a little bit. There. Okay, separate it a little bit. Make sure we're not getting this issue. Okay. And who else? That's it. Um, yeah, we've got some old crusty caps in here. Um, so not, uh, not the worst that I've seen, but someone's been in here before and then you can obviously see some missing hardware. Someone's been in here. Um, I still think it's worth saving, but that's just me. Um, I have a thing for these old PVs. Um, let me switch camera angles uh, just so I can capture uh, something of note. So here's one of the boards on the PV. Um, let's see here. And I, I was looking at what I thought initially was a resistor on its way out. But it doesn't look like that's the case. Um, what is the case is the, the casing of this Mallory right here. And then the, the adjacent one. Um, this this board needs to be removed and uh, scrubbed down. It looks like um, maybe this is 100 microfarads. This is just gone. And it looks like it was um, leaking its electrolyte down onto the board and then start cor started corroding the board. But it looks it just looks like it's superficial. So um, I would rebuild this board uh, to a degree. I would change out all the electrolytics here on on the main board. Now the power tubes look good, or the, the tube sockets, that is. Ah, I keep finding dead spiders. Um, and, and then I would just do a routine service uh, beyond that. Um, I would pressure test the cap can there. It's housing four, uh, four caps. And it looks like... Actually, it's um, and then two of them are, uh, two of them are, in parallel. Which ones are those? I'm not sure which ones, but I would just do forty all the way across. Um, I would probably just do forty all the way across. And just give her a little cap job. That's probably what I would do. Um, just look at let's see where are these going. They have red, blue, and green. So. Um, I'll literally I'll just bypass this cap can and run the, run everything, run everything at that. Is that, so let's see, the half oval and square are 40. Are they joined? So the half oval and the unmarked is joined. That means 60 microfarads. 
I would probably just put an 80 there in, it, in its place. Or actually, I would just run 40s. I would just run 340s um, right through here. I would just put the anodes uh, right there. I would just do that. So what is that? That is, where's this guy at? Yeah, so anode, anode, and then anode. And where are you going? This is going around here, under here, and then over here. Over to the cathodes. Interesting. Awesome. Um, so anyway, that's what I would do. So that is uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, whatever. Probably about um, 20 caps on the main board. These two big filters there. Clean up the board. Uh, probably change those resistors, those carbon comps out. And see what's up from there. Uh, maybe some of that distortion over on the normal channel has been addressed. Um, if those leads were shorting on the transistors, we'll see. So talk to you soon.